Alright, so I was going to do this video last night, but I was extremely tired. And so I turned this game off in the fourth quarter when Vooch got that like tip in layup. So I think it was DeMar, De no, it was Zach. DeMar got trapped. He made the pass to Zach. Zach made the pass to Green, who kind of, no, it was, actually, I got the players wrong. Either way, it was Ayo that I think made that pass to Javante, who kind of like made a pass to Zach, and he kind of fumbled it. And then Vooch went in and got the two, and it gave them like a 112, I think, to 110 lead. I turned the game off at that point because it was like, it was like over in my head. And so I wake up this morning ready to do a video on why the Bulls won the game. And I went and checked the score because something's like, just go check the score. And I'm looking and I'm like, we lost. We went to overtime. And so I get up here uh, and it's like three o'clock in the morning, by the way. And I get up here and I'm watching this shit. I'm like, wow, I can't believe it. But at the same time, I get it. <laughs> I get it. I fucking get it. Um, also, by the way, because I was watching this, I just finished watching the overtime of this game. I forgot Earl Watson was on that bench in Toronto. And so to me, because if, if you guys remember, if you followed me for a long time, even when I was doing the New Orleans content when Zoe was in New Orleans... Earl Watson is the guy I wanted to be the coach. And he I'm a, I'm a complete fan of Earl Watson. If he ever gets an opportunity to coach in the league as like a head coach again, he's going to do great things. He's going to do fantastic things. And it's really nice to see him on that bench in Toronto. I had forgotten that he was on that squad as a coach, which makes sense. And it's also why I like most of the guys – on Toronto. But let's talk about this game, right? Here's the thing. Toronto is one of those teams that, to me, they're in the same exact situation they were when they had DeMar DeRozan. They're one superstar player away from winning a championship. They got everything you need. Every fucking thing you need. If you could somehow get some light, and what I mean by superstar I mean, Joker, Embiid, Giannis, Steph, LeBron, Kawhi, KD. They're one of those guys away from being a championship winning team. It's crazy considering, you know, they swapped out DeMar for Kawhi and they got their ring. They're in the same exact position now. They got everything you need. But there are certain teams in the league where they have, like, what I consider... Uh, over an overabundance of things. So this team has an overabundance of wings. You got Scotty Barnes, OG, Pascal. Um, if you want to include Gary Trent, that's fine. But they got Precious Achua and Chris Boucher. They pretty much got all the wings you would want in this league. And I'm not saying like, okay, they got, you know, all every single wing that exists. But if you're talking about you want to make a trade for wings, this is a team that you do it with. They got, they got a lot of talent there. Um, this team has a lot of length. They bother teams because they, they, they don't really play a center. They play um, Pascal as the center. Okay, he's like 6'9", six, 6'10", six, somewhere in there. He's not a traditional center, but he has the size. This team has the size and the length all over. They do what the Bulls want to do, except better because they actually have the parts to do it, okay? They make it very uncomfortable for you to, like, play, like to get into your sets or get into the paint comfortably. So you're sitting there, you're guarding, you're being guarded by a player. You got guys who can interfere with shots, like, a, a full step away without overcommitting. Like, it makes it very hard. Like, Golden State struggles with this team. Because, and they struggle, they also struggle with Phoenix too, because they have the link that bothers them and what they want to do. It, it makes it very hard, even on contest, 
they don't have to be right up on you for the contest. They got that kind of link where they could just be a little bit of ways from the contest and they could play you and be like, okay, I'm in a good enough position to stop you from driving and to stop you from shooting without overexerting myself. Fantastic roster construction. This is a championship caliber team if they had the guy. And I know this is a long ass kind of tangent, but I, I really, really like the Toronto Raptors. I really fucking like them. Um, let me put that to the side now. Look. I'm going to just run through the stats of the Raptors real quick. Uh, OG, 21-1-6. Okay? Was giving them cats hell in over t- overtime. Uh, Pascal, 25-13-7. That's a Pascal-like game. I didn't like the efficiency from him, but he did everything that you would expect from him. You know, he, like I said, him and OG, these are guys I want at the power forward on this team. So when I was talking about, okay, if you're going to trade Pat Will, these are the kind of guys that I want. Looking at these stat lines, these are the kind of players that you want on this Bulls team. And I hope if you guys watch these games or at least watch this one, you can see why I want one of these kind of guys. If you got to get rid of Pat Will, this is this is what I want brought back in to replace him. Uh, Gary Trent Jr., uh, 16-3-3, three three, 513 shooting. Scotty Barnes, 21, 8 and 2, 9 to 16 shooting. Uh, Fred Van Vliet, who's an all star, 21, 4 and 9. Um, off the bench, Precious Achua, 5, 11 and 1. I believe they got him from Miami. He was 2 and 9 shooting, though. Chris Boucher, uh, 16, 10 and 1, 8 of 14 shooting. And Benton, he had 2, 6 and 1, 1 of 5. And then they played Kim Birch, and he only had two rebounds. Um, I mean, that is, these stat lines like are ridiculous. Like the lowest scoring starter is 16 points. Are you fucking kidding me? Like four of the other starters had over 20. It's fucking insane. Fucking insane. And then Chris Boucher gave you 16 and 10 off the bench. Like, look at this on the boards. They were dominating. Eight rebounds, Scotty Barnes. 13 by Pascal. Um, let's see. P- Precious Achua had 11. Chris Boucher had 10. Like, Benton had six, like, rebounds. Like, that is fucking ridiculous. This is one of the weaknesses I talk about with this Bulls team is getting strong on the boards. Like, just... Looking at these guys, that's over 40 rebounds from four guys. Four fucking guys got you 40 rebounds. Let's see. 8, 13, that's 21, uh, plus 11, that's what, 32, plus 10. Yeah, it's, it's, 40, it's 40 fucking uh, two rebounds off of four guys. Crazy. Crazy fucking efficient. And, and, they, and they work. They work you on defense, man. This is a fucking squad. This is a team that really just needs that one guy to put them over. Like, if the Joker was on this team, they would be in contention for a ring this year. If KD was on this team, this team would be winning a fucking ring this year. Fucking fantastic, man. I love this team. Now, going to the Bulls. First of all, all the starters got double figures. And I don't want that to, you know, slip away um, in this analysis. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and run through the stats. Javante was 13 6 2, 3 7 shooting. Uh, DeMar, 28 6 7, 7 17 shooting. Vooch was 30 18 4, 13 21 shooting. Zach 15, 5 and 7, 6 of 10 shooting. And Ayo was 11, 4 and 8 on 5 of 12 shooting. Here's the thing that I want I want people to take away from this, right? Vooch was going to have to have a Vooch game. This is what you would expect from Vooch on Orlando. Um, this is kind of, you know, efficiency and performance I, I normally typically expect from that brother. Uh, 30, 18 and 4, that's, that's a Vooch stat line. But he did this on a team where they didn't have a center to kind of deal with him. Uh, The fact that he, like he honestly, because Zach had back spasms. He he wasn't going to play initially. 
I would like if he's gonna take ten shots for the game, which means he clearly wasn't Zach, and you could see him like wincing in pain, gr- gripping his back. The way Vooch was playing, I would have front loaded all the shots to Vooch. But instead, you got Kobe White on the bench taking fifteen shots. He was six to fifteen from the field. He got sixteen points. Um, again, I would have rather sh- like gave some of these shots to Vooch. Vooch, I would have gave like another six or seven shots at this efficiency because the way he was playing and they had no answer for him, he probably could have got you 40. And he gets you 40, you probably win that game. But you were lacking on the boards anyway. Like, yeah, you were getting the assists. They, they, like, at one point, they were like 20 uh, assists on 24 makes. So the ball was definitely moving some. Although it did stagnate at points in the game, which I think is why they ultimately ended up losing the game. Well, part of the reason. But, I mean, just just look at this. This, Okay, let's talk about these, these percentages real quick, okay? Javante, DeMar, and Io. In order, 42.9, 41.2, uh, 41.7. Low 40s, bad efficiency, right? Then you go to Kobe White off the bench. 6 of 15, 40% shooting. Troy Brown, 2 of 6, 33% shooting. You know, it, it, it's... Tyler Cook was 1 of 2. I'm not going to talk about that. Most of the team was inefficient shooting other than Zach, who only took, like, 6 of 10. And his shots were either, like, the most efficient shots or they were open shots because he couldn't do much. He was clearly hobbled. He also had five fouls, by the way. That's that's the other thing that, that this team needs to do better fouls. Him and Ayo had like nine fouls between the two of them. Fucking ridiculous. And the turnovers. DeRosa had four. Vooch had four, uh, three. Uh, Zach had two. Ayo had three. Like, they got to clean up those turnovers. Again, this is something that has not changed even with Zoe leaving. You know, for all the people that want to say Ayo is better. That, that shit has not changed. Okay. His thing. This team is going to struggle because, see, break, I'm going to break this down. Most of our squad is guard slash wing players, right? So when you play a team like Toronto, they have the bodies to throw at you. Okay? I just showed you or, or, or told you all of the, the wing players that they have. We got Javante Green, DeMar DeRozan, Zach, and Ayo. All of them played over, not including Vooch, all of them played over 40, 40 minutes this game other than Javante Green and Vooch, okay? Um, Kobe got 22 minutes off the bench. Troy Brown got 16. Tony Bradley had 10. Matt Thomas had 10. And Tyler Cook had three. You know, that that's the minutes off the bench, right? That means DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine and Io are getting hit by wing players the entire fucking game. Obviously, Zach was not himself. Hell, he only took 10 shots. But that is going to bother you, especially late in the game. DeMar DeRozan was 7 of 17. He was not his normal efficient self. And the thing is, okay, he has an advantage normally. If he's playing most playing most small forwards, he's either going to be faster than them, he's going to be more experienced than them, he's going to be more technically savvy than them. He's got OG and Pascal hounding him all fucking game. So when it's late, when it's time for, when it's crunch time, and he's got to go take these shots, he's shooting over length. He's got to get that ball up on a higher arc than he's nor- that he's normally used to. And OG and Pascal, championship level players, they played on that Kawhi team, so they 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 know how to fucking win. They're not going to fuck up and make the mistakes that a lot of other guys can make. Plus, their genetics, their gifts, their physical gifts give them an advantage Like as far as closing out and defending him. They can afford to give him a little bit of space without sacrificing the contest. It is going to make it hard on players like him and Zach Levine. Again, Zach was hobbled. He was not himself, but he still shot efficiently because even though he wasn't like taking Zach S shots, which is probably a good thing because sometimes he goes overboard, he was still taking good, efficient shots. And so because of that, this is where we're at. Okay, 
Again, bench scoring is is shit on this team. Um, yeah, Kobe got you 16, but he was inefficient doing it. Doesn't make it any better. You know, you got freaking 23 points off the bench. Okay, you want to talk about the effect of Lonzo and Alex Caruso. Lonzo in the starting lineup could have gave you Io's stat line. Okay, Io could have gave you Io's stat line off the bench in less minutes due to, you know, how he would have played and what he would have been uh, forced to do. That's that's points that you're missing. And I don't think people get that when they look at the Io Zo comparison. Is Io now has to produce at Zo's level, and he has to try to somehow circumvent his own scoring. He can't do both. With Lonzo and Caruso, Io can play more off the bench. Matter of fact, Javante Green normally isn't a guy that's going to get you thirteen. He's more like four points, five points here, but he's going to do all the other little things, right? So he gave you a little bit more than what you're normally used to. But again, you're still missing Caruso's defensive productivity and his production in general and Zoe's. And so without that, you're leaning heavily on Kobe and Troy Brown Jr. to do most of the work. Well, they both went 8 of 23 tonight combined for 21 points. 23 shots to get 21 points. You're not getting that. You, you like you, you're not getting anywhere with that. You really need Io to be off of this bench to help like circumvent some of this with the rest of the guys, right? You really don't want to be playing Javante thirty three minutes for thirteen point six rebounds to assist. It, it it's it's just not it's just not going to work. But let me go back here and look at this Toronto, right? The entire starting lineup, and they, they had some inefficiency in their scoring too. Um, Fred Van Vliet, he, he, we had a lot of link he had to shoot over, but he just had a bad night. He was 6 of 19. Gary Trent was 5 of 13. Pascal was 9 of 22. But OG was 8 of 15, and Scotty Barnes was 9 of 16. Okay? Chris Boucher was 8 of 14 off the bench. Pressure Chua, 2 of 9. D, uh, Benson was 1 of 5. <clears throat> They had some inefficiency too, but the problem is, when you look at this, free throws. Fred Van Vliet, six of six free throws. Gary Trick, three of three free throws. Pascal, six of seven free throws. Uh, Scotty Barnes, one of two for free throw. DeMar had 14 free throws, which helped him with his efficiency. And I want you guys to think about it from this perspective. If you take away the free throws, DeMar only has 14 points on 17 shots. Right? Javante Green got to the line seven or eight times. Like, so he, he got there eight times. He made seven of them. That means he only had six points off of his own merits. Zach only went two times, made one. So of his 15 that he got on the 10 shots, only one of them came for free throws. Vooch didn't go to the line at all. All of his was just off of his own strengths of his hit shots. Io didn't get to the line. Kobe didn't get to the line. Troy Brown didn't get to the line. Nobody else got to the line but DeRozan and Javante Green, who were both inefficient. Meanwhile, Toronto has Fred... Gary Trent and Pascal all getting to the free throw line and they're spreading the wealth out between the three of them. DeMar got 14 fucking free throws. Now, him making, getting 14 is insane, but him making out 14 is even more insane. That might be the biggest reason Javante got, somehow got eight free throws too. And he made seven. You're going to need that. That's 22 alone. That's 22 alone. Right? Matter of fact, if I go look at this, Pascal had seven. Gary Trent had three. That's 10. Fred Van Vliet had fucking um, six. That's 16. Right? So we go back and look at the score, 127 and 120. Well, go look at the rebounds next. 
The rebounds I already told you. They had over 40, and that's not even including the entire fucking squad. I think in total they had for the entire squad, I think they had uh, 58. I mean, uh, 58, 48. Let me go look at the Bulls here. Bulls got... Okay, this may not be correct. The Bulls, it looked like, got 30 rebounds. Let me see. There's no way. There's no way that's right. Let's see. Let me count this man. Let's see. 1, 3, 7, 11, 12, uh, 21, 30, 39. Yeah, something's not right about that total adding up. I don't. I don't trust this total that's adding up. This is this is incorrect. This is incorrect. I don't want to give you guys fake stats here, but I can tell you just by looking at, yeah, that that's incorrect because, yeah, Toronto easily got damn near sixty. They killed them on the offensive glass. They destroyed them on the offensive glass. They were getting all these second chance points. That's part of the reason they lost the game. But, yeah, I don't know what's going on with this PlayStation thing because this is this is where I normally watch League Pass. I do it off of my PlayStation, and uh, I watch it on there. But sometimes they get finicky with these stats. Um, yeah, the way they count this is not correct at all because it says they only have thirty rebounds. Um, yeah. That, because Vooch alone got 18, and Javante and DeMar got uh, six apiece. That's 30. And then Zach has five. Io has four. That's 39. Kobe with one. That's 40. Um, Troy Brown, Tony Bradley, Matt Thomas. That's 50. And Tyler Cook has 51. They definitely lost the rebounding battle, though, for sure. I don't know why this, I mean, even still, this is calculated wrong, but it still has Toronto having more. You know, let's see, Chris has 10, Benton has 6, that's 16, that's 18, with Birch, uh, 29, Achua, uh, 33, Fred, 36, Gary Trent, 46, Pascal, um, 47, OG, and then 55. So yeah, that that I don't know why they got it count like that. That's that's crazy. But <clears throat> rebounds, turnovers, and free throws. That's 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 the game. Rebounds, turnovers. That's the game. And free throws. And I, I can't even front. Whenever I go look at games, those are the stats that I typically want to go see. Who won rebounding, who got to the line the most, and who got the most turnovers. That'll tell you a lot. Um, the reason why I care about those stats. Turnovers means you gave the other team a possession. Okay? So if they're equal, it cancels out. Okay? But the other thing is the rebounding. Who, who ended possessions? Okay? Very important. Free throws, because those are points that ignore possessions. I care, if you look at it, there's a there's a, 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 a theme here. I care about who got the most touches of the basketball. I mean, the assist is probably something else I should look at, but all that, all that really means is someone gave it to a person before they made it. That could be a dump-off pass, or that could be one of those joker passes where he's sitting out on the perimeter on one end and tosses it to the corner on the opposite end for an open three. There's no way to quantify difficulty of the assist. Like, there's no measurement for that. And so, for me, it's very hard for me to kind of like, eh, you know, kind of, you know, use that as a, a semblance of, okay, who was effective or not. I look at the turnovers because it tells me who was careless with the ball or who forced an error, which is effort on defense, Rebounds, which is effort on glass, which to me could be an effort on defense stat because if you're putting effort on the glass, it's going to show up in limiting the opposing team's possessions, which is defense. Like, hypothetically, 
Hypothetically, if you started a game and you your team made a shot, other team goes down and misses, and then you get the ball back, you could theoretically take a shot, miss it, rebound, take a shot, miss it, rebound for the rest of the game going into each quarter and never lose. That will never happen. <laughs> but theoretically, it could be a thing, right? So if you win the boards, you will win the overall control of the game. That's why I emphasize, especially in the playoffs when possessions are limited, you need to get as many possessions on the board as possible. I'm going to always look at the rebounds. Free throws, they're free points, man. They're free points. Free throws can offset efficiency. Thus, this game went into overtime because DeMar had 14 free fucking points. Javante had seven points. That's 21 free fucking points. Without it, this team is at 99 points. Without it, Toronto is sitting at like 100 and like four, 100 and, 105. Those free throws help teams. And so I always look at that because they offset some of the other stuff. Along with, you got to go look at the personal fouls a little bit too. But I don't, I don't expect Toronto to foul as much. This team though, especially without Caruso and Lonzo, I expect a little bit more fouling to occur. I mean, Zach had five, Ayo had five. Uh, four. That's your start backcourt. Zach Levine gets one more foul. He's out the game. Even though he played 42 minutes on a bump back. Io played 42 minutes and had four fouls. That's any one little call could have gone the wrong way. He would have been at five. And now it changes the way he has to play defense. And that's your starting backcourt. Now imagine if Zach has to foul out. Guess who's coming in? Kobe White. When Kobe White comes in, He's not going to play defense that well. And this is one of those games where he didn't shoot the ball incredibly well in general. I mean, he was 4 of 8 from 3. Okay, so he made 50% of his threes. That's where the bulk of his scoring came from. Okay, but that means he had seven other shots that he took and he could only make two of them. What were those shots at? Mid-range and around the rim. That's where the effect of that Toronto defense came in. Tony, uh, not Tony Bradley, Troy Brown. He was one of four for three. He was two of six in general. But take that away, that means he was one of two from like mid-range or the basket. What it means is they just ignored him. They fucking ignored him. They didn't care. Zach Levine was two of four for three, which means he was four or six from the field. He was efficient. He only took efficient shots. Vooch was 4-6 from 3. Okay? Take that away. He's 9-15 from the floor. Efficient. That's what? 60%. Okay? See, it adds up. DeMar was 0 for 1 from 3. So, really, it just means he was 7-16. It's still inefficient. It's still inefficient. It still checks out. Javante took 1-3. He missed it. Other than that, he was 50% from the field. It's one shot. One shot. But again, I don't expect Javante to have like mad efficiency because he really only, he, he's really a guy that just attacks the rim anyway. And he's not a guy that gets a lot of opportunities and attempts. So because of that, his, his numbers are going to fluctuate because of the pure volume he actually takes. But that's pretty much the game, people. 127, 120 Bulls lose. Crazy. But yeah, man, I, I need that, I need that uh OG uh Pascal to, to Bulls energy. I, I need that. Like straight up. Bulls play the paces tonight. I'll catch y'all later. Y'all have a good one. Peace.